going into a, a discussion on a really serious issue, Ethiopia. You know, Ireland has, since we came to the Security Council table, focused on this really critical issue. We were very pleased that on Friday uh, we broke silence after six months of watching a situation on the ground deteriorate day by day on the humanitarian level, on the security level, on the human rights level. Uh, we, we struggled to get the Council's voice out there and finally on Friday we broke that uh, and we had a, a unified voice of the Council calling for an end to hostilities and a negotiated ceasefire. Now the hard work begins and the object of this discussion this afternoon is importantly that we will hear from the UN, of course, from Rosemary de Carlo, but also we've always recognized the critical role of the African colleagues, the African Union, the regional organizations in the resolution of this crisis in Ethiopia, which is no longer just a northern Ethiopia issue. It now looks like a really important uh, uh, challenge for uh, the government of Ethiopia and all parties on the ground. So we will hear this afternoon from President Abisanjo. I'm, I know that over the weekend he has had many important contacts. We are interested in hearing from him what pathways to peace he sees. Ambassador, given that you were able to reach consensus on a statement on Friday, do you see any kind of opening at all for any stronger action by the Security Council? Well, look, what we're interested in doing today is hearing what's happening on the ground. This is a volatile situation. We know that there's been an intensification of military activity on the ground. We know people uh, in northern Ethiopia, but also people, as we know, in Addis Ababa, very concerned about what's happening. Uh, we have President Obasanjo uh, speaking to us today. We know the PSC of the African Union met today, importantly. We'd like to hear from them. And also, uh, we know that Martin Griffiths is on the ground. I haven't emphasized, but I think at this stage I'd hardly need to do that. An end to the humanitarian blockade is absolutely primordial. Uh, we want to see a negotiated ceasefire, an end hostilities, a negotiated ceasefire. Absolutely need to see an end to the humanitarian blockade that is underway in northern Tigray. So we want to get a sense today as to where those important players I've mentioned are now, having spent the last few days on the ground. The EU uh, special representative, special envoy in the Horn of Africa is on the ground today. We know that the US envoy has been on the ground. We know President Kenyatta has been working. We know that EGAD is working, AU is working. So many people all pulling together, including the Security Council today, to see can we help Ethiopia to end this crisis. I'm interested in getting a solution for the people of Ethiopia. We're really worried. There are millions of people starving today. It's absolutely critical that we end that blockade and that we see all parties come to a negotiated solution. Human yeah. lives are at risk. Sorry, you have another issue that you're discussing today in a closed meeting, the Palestinian question. My, my question to you is, uh, and it's, uh, how worried about uh, are you about the recent development in uh, the occupied Palestinian territories including the designation uh, of the Israeli government for six uh, civil society organizations as terrorist organizations, but also settlement buildings, etc. Thank you. Yeah, we will have consultations on two important issues in relation to uh, uh, the uh, Palestinian, the Middle East uh, peace process. Uh, Essentially, on the question of settlements, we will repeat uh, what we've said before. We want to see the Israeli government reverse recent decision on those 3,000 extra uh, settlements. We believe that settlements are illegal under international law, and we need to see an end to that. And, uh, you know, we've been seeing some positive signs on the ground. My own minister, uh, Foreign Minister Simon Coveney, visited the region recently and had very good discussions, very direct and, co and concrete discussions with his interlocutors on the ground. We want to see some hopeful signs return and this issue of the settlement is certainly an obstacle to peace and we regard it as an obstacle to the dialogue between the parties on the ground. In relation to the terrorist organizations, my minister made it very clear that this is a matter that concerns us deeply. We weren't alerted to this. We haven't seen any credible evidence of the links of the Palestinian NGOs uh, to terrorist organizations. We've asked to see what evidence there is. There are Irish non-governmental organizations associated with some of those non-governmental, the Palestinian um, uh, NGOs. So we are very concerned by it. We take any accusations 
concerns about uh, terrorist links very, very seriously. We want to see what exactly is involved here, and so we are. Uh, these these organisations are supported by Irish NGOs. They do. They work with them. We always watch where our support goes to. So we'd like to better understand what's happening here. Madam Ambassador, what happened this morning at the Myanmar meeting? We nobody came out and talked. What? Can you give us some kind of indication of what happened? Well, again, we, we came to the table, it's been a, a while since we've discussed the important issue uh, in uh, Myanmar. We heard from the ASEAN envoy. I found that to be extremely important this morning because ASEAN has, of course, as we know, the critical role to play there. Um, we, we know that at a recent ASEAN summit, there was a, a rejection of the place of the Tatmadaw um, in the summit, a, a decision we supported. We regret from what we heard this morning from the Special Envoy that he still has not been able to obtain access and of course access in Myanmar also means access to those uh, including the deposed uh, democratic government. So we, uh, we heard from him that he's still working hard behind the scenes. We said we would like to see the Security Council speak out. We think the people on the ground in Myanmar who are undergoing a serious humanitarian crisis ongoing, and of course we know abuses of uh, protesters, particularly women and girls who are in the front line there. We would like to see that end. We want to see a dialogue uh, uh, struck. But uh, at this morning, we, would, we re reiterate that we want to see the Security Council speak out and let the people in Myanmar know we're watching. And what's Thanks. the prospect of the Security Council speaking out? 